With Andy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP with Titans head coach Brian Callahan, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for nearly 80 years. Titans head coach Brian Callahan is here. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be here. Well, it's good to have you, as always. And Sunday's loss to Green Bay. Was there an area where you really felt like the team took a step backward? I don't think so. I mean, th- we didn't perform as well as I think we're capable of. Um, you know, I think the missed tackles on defense was something that was out of character for what we've seen from our defense so far. That part I was unexpected. Um but I don't think we took a step back. I, I think that, you know, they did a they hit a couple of plays and we continue to give the ball away at a rate that's not sustainable, um, and put ourselves in a really tough spot. And that's ultimately where uh, the NFL games are won and lost. So in some ways maybe you feel a little better after watching the tape? Mm, I wouldn't because, say I feel I mean, any you better. Pretty, you were pretty down after the game. Uh, yeah, I mean I, I I'm still down, but uh, I'm disappointed because it'd be one thing if I didn't think we were capable of winning that football game, and I thought going into it, we absolutely are, and I still believe that. I I, I think we have a team that's capable of, of a lot better than what we put on tape through three weeks, and I'm frustrated, I'm disappointed, and our, I think I should be. Um, I think our, our players are, and I think they should be because – um, we're better than than that. We're 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 an own three football team. We are what our record says we are, but I do I, I do believe we're better than than own three, and we got to prove it. And and thus far we have not done a good enough job of doing that. But I still believe in our football team. I believe in the guys that we have in there. I believe in our coaching staff, and um, I do think we're we're close. And we got to find a way to get over that that hump and get that first win, and hopefully a few more come after that. Now, you announced earlier today when you spoke with the media that Cheeto Wuzia has a groin injury. He's going to miss some time. And so you're expecting Jarvis Brownlee, who is a rookie, to step up and take his spot. I'm going to start with a schematic question. Do you have to do anything differently when you are expecting a rookie to step in as opposed to a veteran? Yeah, there's always an element of what do they do well and how do we help them best. And, um, yeah, we'll have to find that out you know we he played for a half you know roughly a half I think is about when I remember that um happening and so that part you know you, you get the chance to see him in live action and where they can be used effectively and um I think that that helps at least play a little bit last this past game and moving forward we'll, we'll have to find ways to make sure that he's put in the right positions to succeed and not um, not make it harder on him than it needs to be so in that half or so that you saw him play, how do you evaluate what he did against the Packers? I thought there was some good and some bad, like like any like any game really, but for sure for him as you know, he had a couple of spots where he could have made a nice tackle for a loss and, and missed a tackle and you know, he was he was right on top of that dagger route on third down that got given up but just wasn't quite tight enough to it. Um so there there's some things he's gotta clean up technically to be able to be in better position, but um, yeah, he's going to have to step up as, as as it always goes in the football season. When you lose guys, they got to find a way, whatever's being asked of them, to to step up and perform. The Titans gave up seven plays of twenty yards or longer in the game against the Packers. Six of those were in the first half. What led to the increase in explosive plays by the opposition? Um, you know, I think they hit a couple of nice plays. I mean, the first play of the game was, you know, we were, they were pretty dialed in to, to go knocking the run out and it was a nice run action that, and they had a guy slide out the back door and, um, just good play. We, we weren't, we weren't assigned fully right. Obviously that's how explosives get given up, but, um, and then, you know, they hit a, they hit a one-on-one ball down the sideline, you know, Roger on Watson and, uh, he won that battle, which happens sometimes. Um, but the ones that are the hard ones are the are, are the third and long explosives that get first downs where you essentially have a team off the field and and they they gain a first down on an explosive play when it's third and fifteen. You, those are the ones that are kind of critical and killer, and that that's where I was. Uh, explosive plays happen, but those ones in particular were were just tough to tough to stomach when we're we're trying to climb back in the game. Only two penalties against the Packers, and they were both in the third quarter, but they ended up being pretty significant moments in the game, which I guess when a team is losing any mistake, big or small, is a real mistake that has an impact on the game. So I guess with that in mind, the question is, do you worry about your team being so focused on not making a mistake? 
Um, I, I don't feel that. Um, and one of the things that I've, I've preached since I've gotten here and, and throughout the entire process is you want guys to be loose and aggressive. And that's, you know, don't fear failure is ultimately what we what we preach. And, and I don't feel that. I don't think that that's how guys are playing right now. I don't sense that they're playing like they're afraid to make a mistake. Um, I think we're assigned right a lot of the times. And I think we've We've had some losses in one-on-one spots that are that are, you know, can be critical. Um, but I don't sense it, uh, uh, that from our team, and and I think that thus far they've they play hard, um, they play physical, and we just need we need to do a better job of, of taking care of the football and trying to get it back um, is really the biggest. I think the biggest reason that we've lost, and we put a stat up today that of our turnovers, and you know, I think seven turnovers and two block punts. So it's ultimately nine. You know, we're minus nine right now. If you count the block punts, they don't count officially as a turnover, but in my mind they do. And um, we've given up 14 points off interceptions, seven points off of uh, uh, a block punt, and then two fumbles in plus territory that led directly to field goals. That's six more points. And um, I think we ended up with our point differential being at 30 points. We lost by seven twice, and we lost by 16. And then we've also given up 30 points on turnovers. And so when that's you look 30 at – 30 points. There's yeah. your th- – that's that, and. That's it. That's it, and um, that's encouraging and discouraging all at the same time, you know, because I think we have the makings of a good football team, and and we've been competitive and ultimately haven't made enough of the plays that help us win a game, particularly in the fourth quarter. So Ernest Jones led the team with 13 tackles. Kenneth Murray had eight tackles and two sacks. Are you pleased overall with the play of your linebackers? Yeah, I think it's a group that – you know, we had to re- remake in a sense. You know, we had to we had to go get two linebackers, and I think Jack's done a nice job too. But Ernest has really stepped up and played really well. That group was one that we had maybe some question marks going into the season, and, and thus far they have answered the the bell and really played pretty well for us. I think um, both in the run and the pass coverage. Let me ask you about Tavondre Sweat. Seems like we talk about him every week. Four tackles in the ball game. Most active he's been from a statistical standpoint as he gets his first four tackles as a Titan. Did he continue to make progress? Yeah, and he's made progress really every time that we've we went out there. And his every week that's gone by, he's gotten better. Uh, him and Jeff are against the run, in particular, are, are a force. I mean, they're really we're really hard to run the ball through the middle of our defense right now. Um, and they do a really nice job and. Sweat and just keep showing up, and that's why we drafted him where we did because we saw that he had the potential to be an impact player inside, and guys that are his size and move like that and, and are really hard to move off the line of scrimmage are, are what you need in the NFL nowadays, and um, he's, he's been everything we've hoped he would be so far. He just has to keep coming. Hey, Titans fans, with a Kroger Boost membership, you'll score big with double fuel points, free delivery, and lots more. Go to Kroger.com slash boost for details. Kroger, official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. We continue with Titans head coach Brian Callahan. The Titans got off to a really good start against the Packers. They had a touchdown drive right off the bat. But then the offense wasn't as consistent as you would like for it to be. Where do you feel like you maybe left some opportunities for it to have been a little bit more productive day? Um, You know, just the third down conversions when we've had opportunities. Um, You know, we go down, we we score, we answer their, their score with a score. Opening drive felt good, did a lot of good things on that drive finish it with a touchdown in the red zone, which which we have to do. They go down and, and kick a field goal. It's, it's 10-7, and we get our second possession, and we throw an interception for a touchdown on our, I don't know, what it was, 11th play of the game. Um, and now it's 17-7, and puts us a little bit out of rhythm, and then we we, we get back into a third and, and manageable. Um, and then we we took, I think, two sacks on third down in the first half on some unscouted looks, which we knew was going to be something that we'd have to deal with because the, the film was limited on the, on Jeff Halfley, their coordinator, and they showed something they hadn't shown in two games and, and caught us. Uh, they played a, a snap of man coverage in a spot. They played primarily zone, so we had a, a zone-style play versus man, and that didn't go great and have to hold the ball, and we get sacked. And then very similar thing they did in the third and short that we got sacked on was, um, you know, we were trying to uncover man versus zone, and we have kind of two plays called in the, in the play call, and 
they react to emotion and they show essentially man coverage everywhere. And then on a snap, they drop out into two Tampa. Really well done on their part, but uh, forces us to hold the ball and react. It's not what we thought we were getting. And uh, then took another sack there. So just the execution on third down, uh, the plays, the selection, the process, everything just needs to be better so we can keep getting opportunities to drive the football. Because uh, when we drive the ball and we get first downs, we've generally been pretty good, um, but we've had way too many three and outs. DeAndre Hopkins' performance, was that the biggest positive to come out of Sunday's game, for the offense at least? Sure. He, he's back to normal, it feels like, and uh, made plays on the ball when the ball was in the air, found ways to get open, and he did a nice job. I mean, we needed, a, we needed his help in that game. We needed him to make some plays, and uh, he did. And he looked like the Hopkins that, that everybody knows and uh, loves around here and what he's done for his whole career. He's, he's got a knack for getting open. Even at his, at his years in the league, he just knows how to do it. And he's a very, very, very strong catcher of the football. And so in those contested plays, like on the touchdown, he goes and grabs the ball and makes play. And that's what we need more of. We need more guys to make more plays um, like that, where it's just it's a, it's a one-on-one. That's us versus you. Go make the play ball's in a good spot he goes and gets it and then finishes it with a touchdown and that was really encouraging to see him back to the Hopkins that I think we all were hoping to see early on he clearly helped Will Levis how do the other receivers work going forward to be that same sort of help to your young quarterback yeah I think I think we've seen glimpses of what they're capable of with with Hop having a nice game and then Calvin had a really nice game last week and now we got to find a way to get more opportunities for both those guys and Tyler does what he does which is convert third downs and and like he did on the first drive of the game um those guys are all productive players I think they're all right about I think they all have what eight catches right now I mean they but I'd like to see them all have more um that would be the goal and you know we didn't get it didn't get the run game going very well in this past game we didn't have many carries Part of that was the game got away a bit, and uh, they were making it hard to run it. And so we just started to throw it, and it was relatively effective. But, again, I think the we've yet to hit on all cylinders at any point on offense, both in the run game and the pass game, and need more opportunities so guys can keep having opportunities to make plays. The Titans are going to take on the Dolphins on Monday night football. How do you plan to use the extra day of preparation? Um, we use it on the front end of the week uh, to pick up an extra day of uh, we'll keep our normal um, coaching staff routine. We'll treat this like a normal week, and then we pick up a little bit of time at the end of the week to refine. Now, we won't um, necessarily like stay till midnight tonight because we have the extra day, so you kind of space it out just a little bit, but we try to be as ahead by the end of the week, whereas the players, you give them a little bit of the extra day on the front end to get off the, the game. And so tomorrow is the off day. Wednesday is like a bonus day where we have a – a walkthrough introduction. So you kind of take half of what you do on a normal Wednesday, do it then, and then do the other half the next day when you actually start your week on, on what is Thursday. I know it's kind of weird, but Thursday is Wednesday for us on a Monday night game. So yeah, we walk around doing that all week, and it confuses Monday is people. Wednesday Monday is, is <laughs> Thursday is Wednesday, and Friday is yeah. Thursday. Yeah. It's, people it's, look at you like you've got six crazy. heads. Yeah. Yeah. But we were, it's just the way our, our world works. It's our world. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but that's how we'll do it. We'll give the players the front end, and we'll try to be ahead as a coaching staff with the game plan, and then we catch up a little bit at the end of the week um, as as they work through the normal process starting on Thursday for the Monday night game. So like last week, you're not going to know who the opponent's quarterback is going into all of your yep. prep. What's a little different, though, is with the Dolphins and kind of their mix of guys – they could change a lot of what they do offensively based on who they decide to put in that spot. Mm-hmm. Is that concerning? I mean, it's always concerning, yeah. It's it's just an element of, of what it is in the NFL right now. And I think uh, Mike is as an excellent offensive football coach. He knows how to put his players in great positions. And whatever quarterback we have, you know, is going to be put in those advantageous spots as best they can. They're going to help the quarterback every which way is possible. And – they, we have to be able to play with our rules. We have to make sure we're tackling sound, make sure we're sound in every which way we are because they're already a difficult scheme to go against. They just they do a really nice job, and they got good players on the perimeter, and so they'll put the quarterback in spots to be successful, and I think that um, you just you have to be on your rules and be ready for uh, whatever it is they're going to do, and it's a copycat league on top of it. So if you if you show that you had trouble stopping something, um, you should expect to probably see it again. And um, 
I'm sure we'll see some some copycat things that the Packers did that uh, we'll have to make sure we correct so we don't make the mistake again. In all of your travels in coaching, have you overlapped any with Mike McDaniel at all? And are you guys, being offensive guys, are you really acquainted? Um, I've known Mike for a long time because um, he's running. He was in that same circle that that um, the floor is, and and Kyle Shanahan and all those guys. They uh, we sort of I was kind of in the same progression as them. I was quality control when they were quality controls and all those things. So I've always had a, a respect and admiration. I've never worked with Mike. Um, you know, I spent some time in Denver. Pro, you know, he had been there at one point, and so a lot of mutual friends, a lot of mutual respect. I, I think he's proven to be one of the one of the best schematic coaches out there and they do stuff that everyone tries to emulate um, they got a really unique blend of skill players and uh, and a really unique scheme that that's really hard to defend another week and another great corner this time it's Jalen Ramsey what kind of a challenge does he pose to your entire passing game um, he's able to take away receivers and that's what these these corners do and they find ways um, to to eliminate half of the field when they can. And, you know, we've played against Jalen before, and uh, he's fantastic. He's as good He's as good as they come. I mean, we just we go from Jalen Johnson to Sauce Gardner to Jair Alexander to Jalen Ramsey. And so the, the, the hits just keep on coming. I mean, there's a, every team's got good corners, and we happen to be playing against defenses that are really good defenses, and a large part of that is because of the type of corners that they have. And they make life really hard offensively. So we got to work cut out for us. we got to find ways um, – to put our guys in position to go attack the defense. And, you know, Jalen's a, a hard corner to go scheme against. He's really good and the highest paid player at the position for, for a reason. So uh, we have a work cut out for us. Hey, Titans fans, SeatGeek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season. Whether you're buying or selling football tickets, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. Seat geek. Seat geek. <laughs> Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. What is your offensive line specific challenge going against the Dolphins defensive front? Yeah, different um, different style than we've played against the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, really a, a little bit similar to our defense with Anthony Weaver there as a defense coordinator new this year. Uh, comes from the same staff as Denard came from, and so there's some carryover. He's a Raven. Raven. <laughs> the Raven <laughs> yeah. defense. It's uh, you know a bunch of people now are running, and and he's part of that family, and he's got his own twist and his own things he likes and does. But um, the core of the system is one that we've we've practiced against. So that is at least has some redeeming quality that you got some familiarity, but um, they'll have their own twist and they got different players. And the front is, is traditionally been a three, four style front over the years and a little bit different than the, the upfield jet penetrating defensive lines we've played the last couple of weeks. So just different style doesn't make it good or bad. It's just different. Um, uh, so they got a good front too. And Clay's Campbell's out there still after all these years playing at a high level, <laughs> which it's like him and Cam Hayward. They just don't ever go away. They're just still out there wrecking people's games. He's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, they're good. He's, a, he's, just, he's one of the best to ever do it. Wow. Good stuff. Brian Callahan, thank you so much for the time. You got it. For Brian Callahan and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP. OTP.